Hello and welcome to another episode of the Crash Talk Podcast. I'm with the day of Sergey. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing fine as well. And today we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to most of you: smartphones. Uh, this might take us all yes. sorts of places, but the starting question is: Is it kind of weird that we haven't gotten past smartphones yet? I don't think so. Like, kind of hard to invent something new to supersede them. So, as Sergey already said, right? It's the question is about like the time between the invention of the telephone and the invention of the cell phone or the mobile phone, however you want to refer to them, was quite substantial. Then there hasn't been that much time between the invention of the cell phone and the smartphone. Uh, which, I mean, is still a type of cell phone, but obviously so is the cell phone a, t- a type of uh, telephone in general. And mm-hmm. then now more time has passed since the invention of the smartphone than between the, the original mobile phones and uh, the first smartphones, uh, at the very least commercially available ones. I tend to not like to look at like when the first patent was made or when the first like prototype was built because... Realistically, it doesn't affect our lives. But when the first ones were like actually commercially sold, um, and it's like mobile phones aren't that old, and they got smaller fast, and then they got more capable fast. And now it seems like they're yeah. stalling. I mean, even in terms of actual developments, um, a lot of them are getting ca- better cameras. Um, there used to be a little bit of a selling point about having like stronger processors and whatnot, but at this point. We've kind of come to a point where you don't need stronger processors because most of the things that you would do on a phone are already perfectly done by the process that they have and much much bigger problems, battery life. And we don't necessarily have better battery yes. technologies. <laughs> and the better the processor is, the more power it draws. So actually, efficiency becomes more of a At concern. least as of right now, yeah. You don't need higher resolution screens because they're fairly small and pixel density is much more important than absolute resolution. Although... Actually, originally the term resolution obviously meant pixel density, basically. Um, but so smartphones are kind of just they're just getting better cameras and more cameras, which I guess is a trend. Um, I mean, it makes sense because um, you can't really have an all rounder camera, you, you kind of have to, like, if you want to wide angle shot and like a telephoto shot you kind of have to have at least two different cameras i would kind of unless you're you're just digitally zooming in which is horrible honestly i would kind of like the idea of just having a phone where i can like put on an actual camera lens (laughs) and you can like swap different lenses but yep they would still have to be smaller because otherwise the sensor obviously has to have a certain size and you also have to have something that you can like actually like lock the lens into because you can't just hold the lens in front of mm-hmm. your phone that's like highly impractical. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, re- I remember like seeing an ad like way back when I, I think it was Samsung. I-, I honestly don't remember. It was basically a smartphone with like a lens in the middle that you can like attach and like remove. I think that that's what it was. Honestly, I think if you can make it so that it basically it isn't just like a like a, a naked sensor, but like it does actually have like a little bit of a lens on it, so that it works even mm-hmm. without anything on it. And then you could also have an attachment that like allows it to like zoom in more or whatever. Um, then that could actually be a perfectly reasonable product. Although the problem I think is that very very a, niche because there's a like. There are people that take pictures on their phones, which is, like, these days, probably most people. And then there's, like, people that actually have fancy cameras. And there isn't a lot of in-between. Like, there used to be, like, yep. cheaper cameras that people would use. But that was before you had uh, cameras on your phones. Or before those were any good, at the very least. And so, mm-hmm. there really isn't much of a reason for an in-between. Because if, you're, if you are an enthusiast, you're not going to get a phone with a great camera. And like, a fancy lens for your phone, you're just gonna get a good camera. Yeah. And the price is gonna be, like, run about the same. So, doesn't really make sense. And, 
Especially because especially the camera is upgradable. I was going to say, especially if the form factor for the phone is different from, like, presumably you're not going to have a standard camera lens just because of the size of it. So, if mm-hmm. you have custom lenses, and then... For reference, um, yeah. that's like a smallish lens. Um, and so, if you want to, like, upgrade then, and maybe you want a better phone, right? Because, I don't know, like, processing or, like, software updates or whatever, right? Like, there are arguments for why you might want a new phone. Uh, and mm-hmm. then the original ones with the lenses didn't sell well enough, they're not gonna make a new one that is compatible with the old lenses, or if you want to switch to, like, a different uh, phone pro- uh, producer, th- those probably won't get compatible. I think there are different standards for, like, actual camera lenses as well, but I think they're not as varied, right? Yes. I mean, like, about every like manufacturer has their own lens okay. adapter thingy and like most of them also have multiple like but they don't change them that often like every couple decades i think okay so it's not terrible so, like, but you, you're still locked you, into you only ecosystem. have like yeah i mean you're, you're not locked in uh you you have like adapters from those manufacturers and like third party ones too okay like I, th- this lens is. If you want to show it, I, I don't think a it, it was made for. Uh, yeah, like. Wait, l- let me, like, this is the lens. Oh. This is the adapter. Okay, like, it's nice. like a just, like literally no electronics in it. Oh, Wait, it's literally just like a physical. My face out of the frame. <laughs> yeah, classic. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's just problem. a physical thing. Yeah, I mean, fair yeah. enough. Those probably aren't even that expensive then. Depending on which mount you adapt to which one, uh, they can be pricey, like the higher two-digit I mean, prices. Compared to what lenses cost, it's still Think... pretty much a good investment. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Um, yes. I was going to say, like in theory, you could 3D print those, but uh, since like that also contained a lot of metal, I'm pretty sure that would not be a great idea, because a plastic tends to wear. Um, but yeah, no, I mean... There you go. Uh, the point is, right, like with phones, I mean, adapters, I guess, would always be an option if there was like two brands of phones that did that, and they were like roughly the same size. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's kind of the thing where you would need a lo- large enough user base to justify that product to continue existing and if it doesn't continue to exist it's not worth investing into and you get that problem where if people don't buy people don't buy into an ecosystem if they don't think it's sustainable but also the ecosystem is only sustainable mm-hmm. if it doesn't have users and so you need that initial momentum to like get something like that going and as we said right there's not yeah if you're a th- if you're a photo enthusiast you probably aren't primarily using your phone camera That is true. We got a bit off track, though. Uh, what could we actually... Bit, like... Like, what could phones even become to, like, justify replacing smartphones? I mean... I, for a long time, thought that, like, stuff like Google Glass would oh. supersede them. Yeah. But seeing how that turned out, it's kind of a bit more dubious yeah it's also like if you look at actual like vr headsets and i mean obviously it's ar is slightly different but you still like those are still too big yeah. and bulky to like actually be wearable on a practical basis and also even if you get it in form factor of just you know regular eyeglasses a lot of people don't like wearing them but even people that actually like need glasses will either choose to wear contacts mm-hmm. instead which i mean fair enough it's a it's the same thing effectively in, in terms of function um or some will just straight up not wear their glasses, like unless they like absolutely need them, which is also not good for your eyes. But so that alone tells you, like yeah. even the people that actually like derive like an actual tangible benefit from glasses don't always wear them, and so getting people to switch to smart glasses that are sure surely have some benefits, but where their functionality can be broadly covered by other devices, it's. It's gonna be a tough sell, I think. I I, I never minded wearing glasses. Uh, yeah. But again, right? I'm not everyone, and 
I would totally like Google Glasses or something that I was actually kind of interested in, especially um, mm-hmm. if there was an option to not actually just have the official glasses, but to just have like an attachment for like regular glasses. Uh, I mean, technically, I think there was a thing where Google Glasses could actually also be had with like uh, whatever like sight enhancement, <laughs> whatever the correct terminology for that is. Um, I actually don't. Know. Oh, I I don't know. Um. I'm not a native English speaker for those that don't know. Um, or was I going with this? Right. Um, but like, yeah, no, Google Glass and AR is generally a good angle. Um, the other thing I think that I thought might be something uh, was wearables, right? Most notably smartwatches. Because there's no reason why you couldn't have the SIM card be directly in the smartwatch and then just not have a phone. I mean, the screens are smaller, so for people that actually, like, use their phone to watch movies, yeah. which those people exist. I mean, I I think I've said this before, right? I don't have a problem with people doing it. And obviously, if you're in a situation where that's the only option to watch something, I can understand why you would do it. But I know people that just, like... Better than nothing. ...will watch, like, entire movies on their smartphones. Like, like just, dude. Right? TVs or whatever. I mean, these days also with, like, ability to connect your phones to TV screens and just cast it over rather than having to like actually pull it up on the TV or whatever or have a computer connected is also yeah certainly make that a little bit it is a thing but yeah I was thinking wearables right because the way I would use a phone right is mostly for calling maybe occasionally texting and for like alarms and whatnot and that sort of stuff like you can also have on a watch now A I'm not a typical smartphone user and B I probably wouldn't want a smartwatch because I don't like watches uh, well, I don't like wristwatches, mm-hmm. um, but <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah. it's probably something that I would get used to fairly quickly. But whenever I have worn a wristwatch, it was uncomfortable for me. Mostly probably because I wasn't used to it, but also I've never seen enough utility to justify actually wearing one. Um, and yeah. pocket watches do the same thing, except they're not on your wrist. Um, True. Except for when they are. And they look more fancy. There is actually... Well, yeah, but... It's kind of like the fedora thing, right? Where something looking fancy only really works if it's in the correct context, right? So the whole thing, like, neckbeards ruin fedoras. Like, yes, it is partially true. But also, casual wear plus fedoras never looked that great. Even, you know, when people are pulling it off. And, like, if you wear a suit in a fedora, no one's gonna think you're a neckbeard. Right? Or, well, unless you are. But, like, you know, like... If you're, yeah. like, well put together overall, then <laughs> that's not going to be nearly as negative. And while I don't mind the whole, like, having a pocket watch in a jeans pocket, I mean, you literally have pocket watch pockets, for fuck's sake. But, um, yes, that pocket isn't for change. Yes, most pocket watches don't fit in there because they got smaller over time. So, pockets, not the watches. Um, but, you know, that, that like, sure, right? That's fine. I, I don't find it particularly offensive or anything, but... It's not as fancy as if you like actually pull it out of your wet, out of your vest and uh, which you know. Oh yeah, I, I have done plenty myself. Um, yeah, but it's a thing right where the smartwatch I think does a lot of the things that the phone does and that people use the phone for. I mean, obviously, anything where like content consumption mm-hmm. besides music, which obviously doesn't play over the display, uh, or sort of like actually like googling something, which is arguably also big use of phones where like a small display might be inconvenient especially without a keyboard and then obviously having a keyboard on the small watch face is also not particularly practical uh, practical but also only being able to use one hand with it yeah but I, I think in theory if voice input was actually decent then a lot of those problems would also not be as pronounced I don't think so like most of the time you use your phone, at least for me, is like when I'm out in public. Yeah. I wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't want to talk to my watch out shopping or something. Yeah, I, you know what, I can see that. Um, no, I, I would I would think that the watches had some utility because uh, <laughs> some mm-hmm. people wear watches, like regular, like old watches, and will still pull up their phone to look at the time. And it's like, what are you doing? Um, why? But it's like, okay, right? So you have a watch for the time. Uh, you can get your notifications on there. Uh, 
so you don't need to look at your phone to see if you have new notifications, which, I mean, is a whole thing about the unhealthy attitude we have towards phones, because, frankly, mm-hmm. I don't need to know if I have a new notification. Like, if I want to check my notifications, I'll check, right? Like, if I want to know if someone called me, like, I'll check my mailbox. Thank you very much, right? I don't... I don't need to, like, be constantly available. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought uh, the watches might actually be a great idea, but they've actually reduced in prevalence. So, that was also just fat. Um, Honestly, it seemed more like a gimmick to me from the very start. I mean, the main problem... The watches. The smartwatches. I've, I've had with smartwatches from a conceptual level was that most of them still needed you to have your phone in your pocket. It's like, if I need to have the phone within like, like, um, like two or three meters from the watch, then I might as well just use the phone. I mean, it's the same thing with smart glasses, right? They still need like a phone or some other device with, that actually provides the processing power. Yeah, but in that case, you can at least argue for, like, using it like a heads-up display and stuff like that, where, like, it does actually, like, uh, between a camera and a projector, you can actually uh, yeah, do yeah. certain things. Like, if you, for example, wanted to get directions, you could just have, like, arrows or, like, the lines, like, uh, on a map. Except, like, oh, this is the way you go. Like, this is the way it turn, right? So there are conceivable uses where... That is beneficial, especially being hands-free as well. Now, the watch is sort of hands-free in that you don't actually need to hold it. Um, but you do still kind of use the hand because... Yeah. I mean, even people that, like, wear their uh, watch on the inside of their wrist, which is actually in some ways more practical, um, still, like, you don't necessarily get a good view with, like, if you're hand on the wheel or if you're holding something, depending on what you're holding and at which angle, right? So, I don't mm-hmm. know, but... I guess the biggest options for how to make a dramatic change is almost in the form factor, right? We both suggested form factor change, not a functionality change. Because the functionality seems pretty dialed in, and it's... Yeah. Most of the features that people actually use don't make sense to cut, and there are no obvious features to add, because otherwise they would have been added. And even if they wouldn't be natively supported, there would probably be an app for it, unless it would actually need hardware upgrades to achieve it. Yes. I don't know. Like, if I had a better idea for something than a smartphone, uh, you know, I probably might have... Real silly not, but I, I sometimes feel like... Probably not. You're just like one clever idea away from like really making bank, right? Um... Oh yeah, <laughs> I think in some sense, we'll or, have... or a really dumb idea sometimes. Yeah, I, I f- like I feel seeing like, trends. I think in some sense we we kind of live in the wrong time for that because I I recently looked at um uh it's a well related to the fact, but like if you even look at people from hundred years ago, like inventors from hundred years ago, all of the random shit they invented, like sometimes in completely different fields, and it's like you couldn't mm-hmm. do that anymore. Like, most everything these days gets discovered by, like, huge teams of scientists. Because, yes. when, like, that knowledgeable on a lot of those subjects, that there just isn't really something that a single person can do. And so, the only really spaces that are left for that are where it's not really a technological idea, but more, like, just, like, a use case that no one has previously thought of or something, right? Where it's, like, you can actually make someone's life easier using existing technology. But, like, an individual person is not going to come up with something mm-hmm. that's like completely going to change everything. It's in some sense sad, but in... I mean, kind of. Like, I, I have like one example where like a, an individual beat a team of... Is it going to be image compression? Yes. QI. <laughs> but it's... It's just... But other than that, I... I, I right? yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like... Yeah. Broadly speaking, you didn't invent anything new, you just made a better version of something that already existed. Um, well, com- making it really, really simple yeah. at the same time. Because, like, PNG is, like, over-engineered mm-hmm. as hell. <laughs> I... 
I, I do I do appreciate that. And I'm not saying there aren't people like that out there, but yeah, it's just a lot more difficult it's to find rare. These, these like <laughs> to find these sort of gaps in like our understanding or gaps in our technology. Um, but yeah, smartphones. Um, that is true. I will quickly say this isn't really the topic, but since I mentioned it, people should really start like approaching how they use their phones differently. Um, now, again, I'm not necessarily I, in 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 the sense I am actually the person to talk about this because I don't use my phone that much, barely at all. Um, but yeah. this whole thing about like constantly feeling the need to be up to date about like everything that happens is kind of terrible for your uh, for your psyche. Um, yeah. It's like people can't go out and just like have a good time or something because they're constantly checking their phones. Uh, I I don't get it. Like when I'm not at home, I'm probably not even reachable. Like, yeah. I usually don't take my phone. I don't have any internet. Like I just I just do whatever I'm doing and then I'll come back eventually. Right? It's fine. If I got a message in the meantime, so be it. Right? I I was away for over a week recently. And I think I did actually get at least one or two messages in the meantime. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, answer them when you get back home. Yep. It's not really, like, there's no discussion really here. It's just like, hey, uh, people, please. Um, I think that probably about wraps it up for the topic. Unless you had any additional thoughts you wanted to share. Not, Not really, no. Which brings us to our facts of the week. So, Gabe, what's your fact of the week? My fact of the week relates to the town of Y, Arizona. Have you heard of it? Probably not. No. It's the really small town that got its name from the Y-shaped intersection of two highways. Namely, the State Route 85 and 86, for those that are interested in this for whatever reason. And it was originally just called Y, as in the single letter. Okay. But... Arizona state law requires town names to be at least three letters long, so they change it to Y. W H Y. Oh no! I would have thought that they would have changed it to W Y E. W Y E? Yeah, that's how you spell Y. Y. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, so let me see Y. <laughs> Uh, Y is a village in Kent. Uh, Y is a town in um, Montana. Y is a town in South Australia. The Y River uh, is in Maryland. There's also a Y River in Victoria, Australia. There's a Y Marsh in uh, uh, the shores of the Georgian Bay in Ontario, (laughs) Canada. There's a Y Road in Strathcone County, Alberta. There's a Y House, a large southern frame plantation house in Talbot County, Maryland. There's Y. Oh, a fictional province in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. That's where I got the spelling from. Hey. Oh. Now I know why that was in my head. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of rivers. Uh, <laughs> other uses to letter Y. Uh. Why rail is a term used in Northern America? Uh, why is a term used... Oh, yeah, no. Uh, in North American Railroad, equivalent to an English railway triangle. I think I have actually heard of that as well. Uh, yeah, so that, that is oftentimes how why would be, um, you know, spelled out. So that was not that French, but yeah, no. All it, right. I, it was because I had... I think the... The association with place name Y being spelled that way was because of the, uh, yeah, the mayor of Y in, um... Oh, God. Like, um, in the C also Y disambiguation, W-H-I. 
god, there's so many songs just called Why. I mean, that's almost low hanging fruit, which, I mean, I guess is why that is the, the word. Yes. Okay, so they, they change yeah. the time to Y W H I uh, Y. Anything else you want to say about Y? Mm, no, that's that's pretty much it. Well, staying in the United States of America, um, have you ever heard of James Garfield? Maybe I don't know. A former president of the United States of America. Okay, then yes. Um, partially well known for having been shot and killed. Uh, so first of all, uh, he, it might have just been a shitty doctor. That's the reason why he's dead, um, because that shot might not have been deadly. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there is a lot of interesting stuff about the story of his um of the shooting that I found out. Uh, mostly about the aftercare after he was shot because he, I, I, what was it? Oh, yeah, um, he like was laying in a hospital bed for months until he like finally died from the consequences. Um, so two interesting things in particular that stood out. Um, uh, the there was a bunch of. Uh, oh, Navy engineers trying to ease Garfield's suffering in the suffocating summer heat rigged up what would be America's first air conditioner in the president's room, according to the Library of Congress. Um, now, the actual Wikipedia article about air conditioning does never actually mention it, and it mentions other cooling solutions that are older, but not maybe not would strictly fall under the air conditioning, and the first air conditioning units in the way okay. that we conceive them, they have about 20 years later. Um, but there was also mention of it in uh, the Wikipedia article for James Garfield um, that cites a different source uh, where they say that an air conditioning unit air propelled by fans over ice and then dried reduced the temperature in the, in the sick room by 20 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or 11 degrees Celsius that's quite a bit yeah uh, engineers from the Navy and other scientists worked together to develop it uh Tough, but though there were problems, though there were problems solved, such as excessive noise and increased humidity. Um, so yeah, they air conditioning, like very early air conditioning was used there, and uh, because X-rays didn't exist yet, and the guy had a bullet in him. Uh, another thing that they that was worked on was a possible way of finding where exactly the bullet had ended up, and so one Alexander Graham Bell, of whom you might have heard, um. Uh, actually, like, built a modified metal detector that was supposed to find the bullet. Um, now, there's a couple of problems of why that didn't work. Uh, one being that the doctor was like, this is where the bullet wound is, just check around the wound, like, don't use the thing anywhere else, and bullets sometimes travel throughout the body. Uh, and because the doctor was an asshole and he wanted yeah. to stay in control of the situation, he actually didn't allow Bell to look at the place where actually the bullet ended up being, which... Yeah, uh, and also I've read somewhere that apparently there was actually metal springs in his um in his mattress, which is not very good if you try to use a metal detector to detect something. Um, so yeah, there's a like it's a comedy of errors oh, of like God. all of the stuff that happened there. But long story short, yeah, uh, those two things, right? Like, uh, Alexander Graham Bell, uh, known for patenting the telephone, also invented a metal detector meant to detect bullets in the human body. Uh, that apparently was successful uh, in some of the tests. I don't know how exactly he tested, but um, then didn't work in practice because mm -hmm. of a number of reasons that were outside of his control. Um, and yeah. also, one of the first air conditioners, uh, and supposedly America's first air conditioner overall, was used for his hospital room. There is kind of the engineering around the death of uh, James Garfield. Uh, that is my fact of the week. Which brings us to the uh, this button to the halftime show. And I have to click here. And there we go. We are doing our hey. squirrel. We said adieu is our first word. And we decided that story is going to be our second word. 
And now, we know there's no T's, Y's, or U's, which are conveniently next to each other on the keyboard. We also do have O's, E's, and A's all over the place. Uh, and additionally, we have at least one I and at least two D's. Yep. <laughs> um, oh. I was gonna say diode because D I O would actually make a lot of sense. Uh, D most only for the like there could be a D here, however not there, and there could be an I here, however obviously not there. So that's definitely something, but not necessarily something. And then O here actually makes a lot of sense, but then. There's nothing pointing at an E here, and the second D is also not exactly optimal. Uh, so... I don't feel that strongly about it, but I, I feel like I had a good start there. Yeah, um... Are there any other... Ending we can find for Dio. Well, there's diorite, which is a type of stone, but that's a bit too long. Yes, that's too long. There is Dior, but that's just a brand name and, and like a person name. I don't think it actually like is a word in that sense. It also is too short. Um... <laughs> I mean, Dio specifically might be difficult, but... Oh, wait, actually, uh, it could also... I, but there's no reason why the I would have to be specifically in second spot, just can't be in first or third. And the D could just as well be in second. Oh. So, the, I, I was just, you know... Uh, yeah. Or we could try something completely different, like something that starts with ER, testing E in both row and column, R just for the row, and then, I guess, error. No, not quite. Actually... Huh. How do you spell error? It's like that, right? The double R is there? Yes. That's bad. I would have liked As a it programmer, this. you should know this. Listen, right? I don't make the errors. <laughs> I just get them. Wait, no. Uh, like I don't write the errors. I just... They show up at the console, and then I'm very sad, okay? <laughs> also, they're usually exceptions, not errors, my dude. I create exceptions, not errors. Fair enough. Preferably null pointers. Fair but enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hmm. Or um, index out of bounds is always fun as well. <laughs> Whenever you try to, you yep. have like a 10 array element and you try to <laughs> reference element 10, and it's like, no, this is actually element 9 because it starts with 0. Which, yes, I know everything's 0 indexed, but the, like. The, the classic off by 1. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's particularly funny. Fun, like, I, I feel like it doesn't happen. Like, I don't usually. This is very precise point. I don't usually, like, have a fixed length array or list and then in specifically reference one outside because I know how long it is and I know there's zero indexed. But whenever you start writing a for loop or something, it can very easily happen that if it references, you know, array dot i or whatever, then uh mm -hmm. list dot get i. Um hmm. Oh, right. I always make the mistake of forgetting that I can't put the I in first place, because otherwise something like idols would have been very good, probably. Yeah.
Is adios spelled the way I think it is? Adios. Uh, yes. I mean, if, if adieu works, why not, right? But uh, <laughs> it is one of those where, obviously, technically, we would prefer to check the O in the spot prior to that, but uh, it's also not terrible. It does check for the A's, which is actually kind of good. Um, having an A or E in the first spot if we can't have, if, if we have the D in the second. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah... Uh, I don't know, I always prefer to have the I and the O switched. Oh, never mind. The the I couldn't Can't work there. Be there yeah. Anyway. Honestly, having something that, has, that goes like this would be great. Like, if you could just do a doise, a doi, um, mm. then that would be... But, like... Huh. I, I'm assuming we're not going to get something perfectly optimal, but... We could just go for something slightly unoptimal, well, not even that unoptimal, that doesn't test for the eye necessarily, we can just do like a door. Test for yeah. test for uh, A there and there, it tests for D there, it tests for O there, it tests for R there, and, well, E. <laughs> um, yep. That's about the best I can come um, up with. If, if you want to test... For another letter, um, you could replace the E with an N. Adorn. Adorn. I like that. How about it? Sure. <laughs> oh. Now that is spicy. Um, first of all, one of these two has to be a D. Um... Okay, that is... Wait, does it? Well, yeah, there's a D in the column, and it can't be in those where we already have letters, so one of these two has to be a D, not Y. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Um, so one it of these two has to be... kind of looks like, a, like an O to me, because of the Discord transmission. Yeah, there's an O right next to it, though, so... Uh, okay. I see. So, obviously, another O right there would make sense, but whatever. Also, yeah, that's one of these two. Also, has to be a D. Mm-hmm. Huh. R's are actually also fairly restricted because this or that would have to be an R. Because we can't have R's here, there, and obviously not here, so it only leaves these two for that column. Yep. It's like a lot of either ors, but not a lot of definite things. We're nothing definite besides the ones that we actually hit. We do have ends, though. That's mm-hmm. good to know. Oh, we actually have ends in both both of the rows where we tested it. And neither of the columns. Yep. Uh-huh. It could be anode. Um, oh, no, actually, it can't be because it, it can't be D. It, it could not, yeah. yeah. I, I was just trying to think because A-N-O is kind of weird. Well, I mean, annoyed. Anode. Another. Okay, maybe it's not that weird actually. Um, I was just trying to th- trying to figure out if A N O, or A something O N was going to be sort of more plausible, but I, I don't think we can quite figure that out yet. Um, as far as the rows and columns that we currently are in, the row wants an R, both want an E, and the. Column basically wants an N just to see. It's not that the column needs an N, but there's two N's pointing that want to be somewhere, and if we can exclude this column, that would also really help for 
like putting all of the ends up front, for example. Yep. So I do. Th- I do think we want an N bonus points if it's there or there. Um. Mm-hmm. Although it's almost more useful to get a negative hit, but um, obviously we can't really affect whether or not there actually is one there. Um. So. I would like an E and an N and maybe an R. Although if we do have an R, it has to be in one of the last two spots. Or in first. First, yeah. Rent. Rents. I don't know. I mean, there is. I guess there's a lot about of Roman. Roman, as in pertaining to the Romans. Yes. Um. Okay. That that has R first, which is one of the places. Jesus Christ. Um. Where we could have it. Oh, does have points going there from both sides, and we haven't tested yet. A, we don't have an inclination one way or the other, but we do know there. As far as we know, we could have found all the A's in the grid, but also just as well could not. Yeah. So it's basically just as good as if we hadn't tested it at all, just like the M. And the N is exactly where I wanted it. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> 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 it says Roman somewhere, That's and you still just yellow. not there. <laughs> and the, the only other one that wasn't yellow in that in that column is orange, which is basically the same as being yellow while also being red. Both yeah. from a color theory stamp from a color theory sense, but also just like okay, no ends, <laughs> end there, maybe end there. Okay, so I'm thinking this is likely to be an end, but by no means guaranteed. Um. Actually, yeah, no, it's not even nearly guaranteed. But both si- both sides, both the row and the column, would like this to be an N. Um, M N would be weird. N M, well, like in no, it's M N would be more common than N M actually, like like in dam or something. But N M, I think, would be weird. Yeah. In which case, I'm thinking maybe an M there. Now, obviously, it could be that the M goes there and the N goes there. Basically, just the other way around. It could mm-hmm. be anom or amon, and then the question is, right? What the fuck is that word? Among. What is it? Among. Among. Okay, yeah, that, that works. Um. Okay. Anything about? The new developments with we have an R in the first uh, first row, but that could be just about anywhere. We have an O in the second row, which we already knew. I'm starting to more and more suspect that it goes there. Um, it's I mean, yeah, it's all just guesses. Uh, but that's why we're it seems likely. Guesses. So for those that don't know, there's two ways we can play tints. One makes it makes it look like this, and one looks, makes it look like this. Uh, if we have them filled in, that means we know for a fact it goes there. Like, literally, no, there's no other option. It's just like Sudoku rules. And um, those ones just mm-hmm. are guesses. Sometimes they're, like, very informed guesses, and sometimes they're just, like, very loose guesses. But it's not like we have many levels of differentiation, and also that would be kind of annoying to, like, actually practically use. Um, so, you know, this is about as good as it gets. Uh, the A... Yeah, it can go anywhere. Great. Um, I 
And in one of the first two spots of this row, but not honestly, the what what's the chance that like the second column is literally just Roman? Uh, it's actually fairly good. <laughs> Not only is it possible, but also the R has been one of three spots, and the one that has two R's pointing at it always seems more likely. And yeah. then the A has one of three spots that it can go in, but immediately after the O seems somewhat unlikely. Not entirely implausible. I mean, there are words yeah. that have OA, like goal. Loan, wait, actually, goal, yeah, no, goal, loan, moat, but like, I don't know. Um, immediately after the G is perfectly reasonable. Um, also, immediately after the R right here works, and then the N, R, N yeah. does work. The R, where is it? And then R, N, I'm pretty sure. A, R, N, maybe even. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of just want to put it there, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I do like <laughs> I, I would I, I would find yeah. it really funny if we got a word that's actually in there and not just like we got it across from it but like we actually like got it just slightly offset that's kind of funny yeah at which point we still need to find where the D in the first and second row go, which could be helpful if we want to have them... Oh, we either need to have DN or DG. Assuming that among is correct. Yeah. Which I feel like makes me lean towards DN. Actually, no, not necessarily. Edge. Edge. Yes, edge. Ledge. I mean, I mean, obviously, ledge doesn't work. It would be like edges or something, but um, just generally, DG does work, actually. Budget also has the DG in it. Or just budge to begin with. Um... And DN... That requires two letters of setup. I mean, yeah, I was just, I was just saying, like, DG in general exists. Yeah. Um, yes. And DN, on the other Quite hand, often. I can't actually think of anything right now. I'm not sure there is one that starts with, like, add or ed or something as, like, a just a... Prefix, but yeah. it would probably be it'd probably be between syllables, right? So like the D ends a syllable and the end starts one. So actually now I'm thinking the D is more likely to go there. We should most likely put the other D right there. And we do actually need an E in here somewhere, which I mean could be there, but it could also be there. Because as we said, edge does work. And we also, just as a side note, need an E here as well. <laughs> in this, not in that spot necessarily, but in that row. And then this could be yes. another T for good measure, maybe. Yep. It could also be a T. I should maybe not lock that in immediately. It could be trade, it could be grade, it oh, could yeah. be... It, it cannot be trade. No T's no, in no the T's entire grid. Okay, let's see. Uh, Craid, raid, e raid, i raid, i rate, but no, well, not the cat, anyways. Prayed, well, parade, but no. Sraid, drade, frayed, grade, craid, trade, craid, raid, straight, xraid, craid. Well, craid, though, but not just craid, I think. Crate, sure, but not craid. 
of raid. And raid yeah, probably. Raid. I, I think G actually seems most plausible, which means you already have two spots and we want G's. <laughs> um, Without ever, ever having guessed a G. I mean, yeah, why would you guess G? Which is right? interesting. That's such a yeah. weird letter to guess. True. Um, <laughs> do we just want to try, like, edges? Or why not? We, we need an S somewhere. It's edge, but not edges. I mean, what? Is it like, is it edging? Like, it has an edging quality to it. <laughs> edging. Off or pertaining to edges. Um... <laughs> What what if it is edged? Oh. I guess it makes more sense. Since we do also need a D in that row anyways. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it could have been like, I guess, ender and then edger. Right? Like, someone who ends and someone who edges. Um, yeah. But again, no, edged makes a little more sense. Like, yeah. And then I guess the question is just, what is it an ed? Right, like, what is it? Is it ended? Ended. <laughs> Obviously, right? Uh, okay, and that leaves us with a bunch of ones that have at least two missing, and not a single one except for that one, actually, that does only have one missing there. Air. Uh, gear? With a... No. Gore? With a... No. Glare with an L, maybe. Oh, yes. Are there any other positive hints that we haven't used yet? Yes. The I in the central column. Okay, so... That goes there then. Right? Because Loy and AIO seems a bit. I mean, AIO yeah. means all in one, but like, you know, like just. You're not gonna. AU. Like. Like, OID is a perfectly fine ending, like in Droid or. Mm -hmm. Well, mostly that, but. <laughs> no, there are, there are other ones. Um, in which case, that would be raid? Uh, the thing is, like, obviously words I'm coming up with I feel like they shouldn't need to have that E at the end, right? Like, rain, which it can't be because there is no N. Uh, raid, which doesn't need to have an E. Rake doesn't have an I. Neither does rape for that matter. Um, raise. We need an S somewhere. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. And then was this dense? Unless it's dense. But, um... It's not going to be dons, it's not going to be dins. Dans. Oh, and it's it avoid. Be. What? Avoid and love, yeah. The love. essential column is avoid, yes. I think we did it! Uh, now the one question that always remains is, is it faster to do this in columns or rows? And I think the answer is it doesn't matter. Yeah, it probably doesn't, yeah. Grade. Loved. Lo burp, loved. There we go. Among. Raise. Uh, <clears throat> it works if you type the letters in the correct order, you know? Ended. Nope. Not anded. Ended. And. <clears throat> <laughs> See, the thing if you want to go fast is you end up tripping up and going slower in total. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure there's some sort of parable that people will compare this to. 
But unlike that one, we didn't cheat. No, wait, the tortoise and the hare wasn't a cheating one. But there was one where they cheated, I swear to God. Was it like... Was it like hedgehogs were running against the rabbit, but like there was three hedgehogs and they were like totally cheating? And I don't know what the moral of that story is, because they won because they cheated, which doesn't seem like a good moral to teach children. I don't know. I I have no clue. Great anyway, love. I find it funny that Roman was correct, but just in a wrong spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great loved among rays ended, glare Roman avoid, dense and edged. Which are, like, all very common words. I yeah. mean, okay, Roman is maybe not a word that you use on a daily basis, but, like, it's not like it's an obscure <laughs> word either. Um, yeah. Was the first one we found. And maybe edged specifically with a D at the end is not, like, overly common either, but, like, edge is a very common word, and obviously, you know, word groups. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this is, like, I mean, both in the sense that I think we actually did go fairly fast compared to, like, I, I'm not going to say we were fast, but, like, compared to our other times, I think we were fairly fast. Yeah. And also, in terms of just the difficulty of, the of like, just knowing the words and coming up with the words, this is probably one of the easiest ones we've had, maybe ever, for the weekly ones. True. Yeah. Despite having two Gs. <laughs> and a G. <laughs> But honestly, the one V, like having one of a, yeah. of a rare letter is not that rare. As stupid as it sounds. Also an M. M's well, feel kind of rare. I also... Yeah. I don't know. M never strikes me as a rare letter, but I think that's partially not just because of English. And also partially because there are some... There's at least one very common word. Well, two very common words that have an M in them. Which is me and am. So M's do show up quite a lot, just in text. But M's showing up a lot in text does not mean that they show up a lot of words, because there's two ways to determine mm -hmm. common like how common a letter is. One is to like actually analyze the text and see how often it shows up, which is how it's normally done. And one is to go through the lexicon, the the the, the dictionary. That's the one, uh, and actually like yes. look at every single word that's in there, and then see how common letters are, which is very different because some words are just more common than others. And having one form of to be and one personal pronoun having an M does already... Actually, him has an M as well. Uh, so having pronouns with an M in them as well makes it a very common letter, I think, in text. Um, but yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, topic two, close down a question. Yeah. Who is the most important per important person in your life? I don't think I can decide on one person, but, but like my parents, obviously. The answer is me. I'm the most important person in my life. I mean... All right. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> Obviously, you can argue the question was not intended to be answered that way. But I think there are some people yeah. that even if they were considering that a valid option might not answer it, and I think that is not a very healthy attitude to life. Um, there's like something to be said about like parents who are like, oh yeah, my children, which is like, okay, sure, maybe, especially if they're smaller children and they, you know, they can't take care of themselves. And so like, you do have a certain duty to them, but I feel like you should prioritize yourself in life. And not necessarily saying like, always be selfish. Rightly, like, you can mm -hmm. do nice things to people without, like, necessarily suffering from that yourself. But I do think some people will take it to the extreme and they will prioritize, like, how other people re will react to something versus how it makes themselves feel, for example. And so I do think there is something to be said about, like, putting yourself first. And once you have, like, you know, a healthy, healthy attitude towards yourself that also allows you to just be better in general and then also... A little mm -hmm. bit of selfishness can go a long way, both to helping yourself, but also to actually just making you a more effective person and thereby making you more helpful to others. So selfishness is not always a negative thing. Um, so I think there's something to be said about that. But um, I mean, besides my, myself, yeah, obviously, I, I, my parents, um, if I had to pick one, my mother. Um, <laughs> it's always fairly easy because I do have a better relationship with her than my father. It's not that I have a bad relationship with my father, but he's just, he works a lot. He's not there a lot, which I guess makes him 
more important in the sense of like actually like financially providing and whatnot, but yeah, in terms of like interpersonal stuff, um, my mother. Um, besides that, my friends, which I guess currently would put you at a very high point because out of all of my friends, you are currently the one I have the most contact with. <laughs> it's not that I like you the best; it's just that I have the most contact with you out of all. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No, 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 that is that is genuinely true. I I don't think you. I don't know. You probably wouldn't make number one, but it's 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 getting closer. It's it's totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, yeah, there's another thing. I mean, this is a close end question, and I'm going into way too many tangents. But whenever people are offended by not being ranked number one in something, it's like why, like. Yes, you are a good friend of mine. You're not my best friend, right? Like, because there can only be one person yeah. that is my best friend. Thereby, by, pro- by logical processing, if it's not you, it's someone else, right? But like, not all of my friends can be my best mm-hmm. friend. Um, and so. That's I, true. I often find like people's attachment to superlatives a little bit. I mean, obviously, also a lot of people use superlatives in like a non strict fashion, where it's like a bunch of things can apply the superlative at once, which is like not how superlatives work, strictly speaking. But, or like, there can't be multiple things that are the best at once. Or like, it's like, not in one category. I mean, when they have, like, the same score, sure they can. Okay, fair. But also, realistically, you could always go more granular with anything. And so there would always be a point where you could differentiate, at least in theory. Now, how, yeah. how down to detail you could go... And, like, still, like, have a personal judgment on something. Because, obviously, at some point, it all bleeds together. But, yeah, there's something to be said about that. Um, but, yeah, no, um, that is that. Um, I, the, the thing that I always think about when... That I always like to think about that is, like, the stereotypical thing. Like, oh, who's the most beautiful person in the world? And it's like, oh, it's you, honey. Right? It's like, no, it's not. Like, first of all... I have not seen all 8 billion people in this world, so the fact that anyone I've ever met would definitively meet a superlative is incredibly unlikely. Second of all, just because, like, you get together with someone doesn't mean that you think they're the most beautiful person. You just, you might think they're, like, the best person with, like, everything taken together, but that doesn't mean that they're always the best in every single category. Like, that's not how per- people work. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> like I'm not even in a relationship and that bugs me right like that that whole concept where like <laughs> you almost are supposed to be required to like say that your significant other is always the best in everything it's like no like, be realistic for Pete's sake like, <laughs> anyways <laughs> um do you like road trips no not at all I'm probably leading towards no. I hate being in a car like, it. I think partially depends on the length as well. I think, like, going somewhere for, like, a couple hours can be fun, but I don't think you would want, like, a multi-day road trip, like, the way you always imagine them, I think, are probably not that good. Um, it involves a lot of sitting in a confined space, which is just not good. Mm-hmm. Um, I have taken longer trips as in, like, driving around for multiple hours. Like, with like friends like that are like very enjoyable because you're hanging out with people that you like. Uh yeah. But like I think there's like a very obvious limit. And so that is that. I mean I recently with recently I mean like half a year ago was in Sweden with Alex and Martin. And we drove there and like it was really enjoyable, like retrospectively, but at the time it, it wasn't not at all. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's also always interesting, like how things are looking back at them versus how they are in the moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I could see that being the kind of thing that's like, I mean, I guess Sweden's not that far, but like, the, could, wait, do you take a ferry or do you have to like go around? Well, you can't even go around, can no. you? No. You, you you can do both. Uh, we drove around 
Okay, so which meant we took like the slightly longer route, but without the chance of like not getting there to the ferry by time and missing so it, missing it and having to wait like half a day. Do you go for like Poland and the Baltics and Finland and like the whole like the whole way around there? No, 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 no. like um, Denmark, then to Sweden. They they have a bridge there. Oh, they have a bridge. Okay, because I was I was about to say I'm pretty sure there's no yeah. land connection. Outside of there, and I'm not 100% sure, if you look at a map, if you could... I mean, obviously, bridges like, are a thing, but like just looking at a mm-hmm. map, I don't know if you could... The um, huge-ass bridge. If you... Ugh, fucking hell. It's always very annoying when you're on Google Maps, like, just the amount of zooming. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's down there. Yeah. yeah. Because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, um, if there wasn't a bridge mm-hmm. there, and you would have to, like go completely around water, you would have to go through Russia, which is what I thought. Because yeah. Estonia no. does not have a land connection to Finland. And so there's like a little bit of Russia that you would have to go through. Uh, like you can go Germany, Poland, mm-hmm. Lithuania, Lat- uh, uh, Latvia, Estonia, like that works. But then you're like in Estonia and you can't go any further. Um, and there's actually no bridges there. So you'd have to like, t- <laughs> you still have to take a ferry and at that point you might as well. Um, yeah, because I wasn't sure right off hand if there was like, if there was maybe a little bit of a connection between uh, Finland and Estonia, but no, there is not because there's no way, besides that bridge to like, there's basically no way to go to from Germany to Sweden without going over water. But a bridge is a perfectly fine way of going over mm-hmm. water. So yeah, yes. Um, uh, so yeah, um, the the one way trip took like one and a half days, and oof, that's too long. Way, way too long. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, I would just estimate that, like, eight hours is just about where you start pushing it, where it's like, if you go for, like, more than an eight-hour car trip, it's like, no. No. Like, even, even eight hours is yeah. probably not great. I would moment. not recommend. But, like, if you, if you do, like, eight hours with, like, a lunch break in between, then, like, that's probably fine. But, like, uh, no, that's too long. So, that's mm-hmm. long, man. I would... I mean, I guess, yeah, no, I've I never, like, driven... That much of a distance. But like, I wouldn't have thought, because like, you know, Sweden is not that far away. Like, Denmark is tiny. Yeah. Denmark is small. I wouldn't say tiny, but like, you know, it's like... Yes. They're already like... Oh, yeah, Relatively no, small. That far north, but, um, okay, let, let's, let's do, I guess, you know, two more and then call it a day. What program languages, if any, do you uh, know? Sure. I am currently most proficient in... Probably JavaScript at this point. Like a year ago, I'd probably say PHP. But I've done so much more front end stuff <laughs> by this point, so probably JavaScript. <sighs> Disgusting. Um, so. Yes, I know. In terms Both of, of them, actually. In terms of, most, <laughs> in terms of most proficient, is, for me, it's probably. I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, the most proficient is Java, right? And then yeah. after that, it's probably uh, C++, which is admittedly very similar. Um, what? <laughs> really? I mean, yeah. Uh, it's been ages since I've done any HTML. So, like, which, I mean, is it even the program language or is it just, like, technically, like, a markup language or whatever? No. Uh, it's a markup language. Wait, does the ML literally have a CSS markup is a programming language. Um, it's Turing complete. I the same as PowerPoint. I have never used CSS. Um, <laughs> so there's that. No, I mean, I, like we've, yeah. we've done some HTML in school. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I'm like, I can like just about do basic things with SQL, um, because it's like a thing we have to do in college as well. But true. Um, SQL is a programming language. But yeah, it's like. Damn. It's, it's mostly basic stuff. Like I, I can just about write like a decent select, and that's, um, like I can mm-hmm. do everything I need to do with SQL in my life with SQL. But also, that's like mm-hmm. the things I need to do with SQL in my life are like basically none, right? So that's like I have some databases just for like yeah. easy reference and being able to run selects on it because having like spreadsheets for certain purposes is just not very practical because then you have like use search to find stuff. It's like ugh, no. Um, yeah, but like horrible. 
But like, yeah, no, it's it's mostly just Java. And uh, C++ is... Mm -hmm. I was going to say it's Java-like, but I think people would more likely say that Java is C-like. But um, but yeah, so I'm more of an object-oriented programmer in general. And and C++ and Java are like worlds apart. You think? I mean... (laughs) Yes. The thing is... (laughs) Uh, like the whole like initialization, deinitialization thing is something that I do sometimes get tripped up on where, you know, C++ doesn't have a garbage collection and so um, you have to deinitialize things. Mm-hmm. Um, but besides that, I feel like there's a lot of superficial similarities. And I've never gotten that deep into C++ oh, yeah. either. So like the only one that I have like, like a decent level of competence in is Java. And everything else is just... But I find programming oftentimes to be more about like knowing how to program just more broadly and less about knowing specific languages mm-hmm. because I feel like once you have like all of the actual that programming knowledge, you can adapt it to most languages fairly easily, especially if it is like C++ is or at the very least can be used pro- uh, object-oriented just like Java. So if you know how to do object-oriented programming in Java, you can also do object-oriented programming in C++. You just have to know some of the specifics like deinitialization and um, pointers, which are like yeah. kind of annoying. Uh, but God, pointers. Yeah, right. Second level pointers. Like, what are people doing? It's like <laughs> sometimes I feel like Java is just C plus plus for dummies. But um, yeah, I I'm mean, okay it, it kind of is. That that that's like <laughs> the reason for its existence, more or less. I'm okay with that. Um, uh, but yeah, that that's so like yeah. No, like more broadly, like I've I've probably like done a little bit in a lot of languages because it just kind of happens, right? Like I've, I think I've like written like some JavaScript yeah. commands here and there, just like in a browser console, you know, like to get sites to do stuff. Mm-hmm. But I've not really like actually like done any projects in it. Um, I've written some HTML for like school projects before, but a that wasn't really that involved, and b that's been like at this point probably close to a decade. Uh, so. You know, that's it's the only one that I can like really like just open up and use it would be like uh like Java. And maybe probably C. I could probably get around well enough. Um Yeah. And then the last question for today, because it's probably have, have has a very simple answer. Have you ever surfed? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't think so is a great answer. Uh no. No I haven't. <laughs> I mean, I've snowboarded like once or twice. <laughs> ah, yes, which land is... surfing. <laughs> um, yes, kind of similar. <laughs> I have... But whoops, uh, I have no never surfed or snowboarded. I have skied, however. Um, oh, I've never done that. Supposedly, it's easier than snowboarding. Probably. Um. I'm pretty sure we weren't allowed to snowboard unless we already could do it or something. Uh, we were on a class trip where we went skiing, and I think some people did some snowboarding there, but I think they wouldn't like. I think there was no no way they. I think they wouldn't teach you snowboarding. So unless you could already do it, like the teachers also wouldn't allow you to like just try it out, right? It's like either either you like know what you're doing or you get an instructor basically, and like they only had ski instructors, I think, or, they, or like the school only wanted to have skiing. I don't know the exact how it worked, but like. We did some skiing. Okay. I didn't particularly enjoy it. I mean, it seems easier, right? Skiing? Uh, snowboarding. I can see why you would think that, but I think it is the fact, like, a lot of the things you can do with skis, where it's like, I feel like, depending on how you angle them, you go slower and faster and stuff like that, you can't really do with a snowboard. You can just kind of vaguely steer by moving your body. Like, that's it. So, you know, mm-hmm. there are some things you can do with skiing. I don't, that has also been years, and also I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I have like, it, and also didn't particularly enjoy it. It's, it's. I, I can kind of mm-hmm. see why people might enjoy it when you know you're like good at it, and you know you you go down something at speed. I guess I can kind of vaguely see the appeal, although it's not probably still not for me. Also, it's cold. It's kind of the nece- necessary connection between skiing and coldness because I mean there is grass skiing, I think, but like uh, you know, yeah. broadly speaking, you do them with snow. Uh, it's overall not that mm-hmm. great of an experience. Like the classroom overall was okay, but uh, the skiing part of it I wasn't that into. Um, but yeah, no, 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 no surfing for me. Um, I 
I've never been to an ocean, I think. I'm pretty sure I've never... Like, I've been to, like... Really? Like, large lakes. But, like, I, I've never been to the ocean, so uh, that also plays into that. Um, Although, even if I was a... Like, I don't know, man. Like, surfing doesn't appeal to me that much. Also, beaches, like, kind of terrible. You know, sand, it's coarse. It's yeah, not really. Everywhere. Um, Yeah, same. And, like... I don't get people that like lay on a beach and read because you, you might as well do that anywhere else. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like I have a very precise environment that I like existing in. And it's just like, you know, like moderate, like plains and forests kind of thing. And then like, that's about, yep. like, I don't need beaches or mountains. That's, like, the, that's the ideal. <laughs> I prefer to stay in, like, a regular human habitat. Thank you very much. Um, although I guess close to water mm-hmm. is technically part of the human habitat just for, like, fishing and water sources, although it's usually fresh water, at least for the water sources. Um, mm-hmm. Right, so uh, I believe that leaves us with our last segment for this episode, which is, as always, the Songs of the Week. What is your Song of the Week? Yes. My Song of the Week is... I hope I pronounced it correctly... Las la ketchup. Ah, I see. Las ketchups. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, uh, that's the bad name, I believe, isn't it? Uh, no, that's the. Wait, it, or is? God, I actually don't know. I kind of forgot that I should say the band name. And I have a strong suspicion of what your song of the week is, but I was kind of seeing if you were gonna. I mean, it's a, the the ketchup song. Yeah, it's uh, yes. Said, hey, the, the band name is La, Las Ketchup Las, by Las Ketchup. Yeah. Yes, the song is called Acereje, uh, but it's also often referred to as the ketchup yeah. song. Um, it is mm-hmm. my last ketchup, yes. That is correct. Okay. They really nailed those bottles. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm pretty sure we've had ketchup bottles that looked exactly <laughs> like that, except that obviously the writing on it is different, but like 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 the shape is is it is it Heinz ketchup? I, I'm not one hundred percent sure. There's like I, I think like, it is. It's one of the, the yeah, brands, it, but it, like, it looks like Heinz. Both the like the bottles yeah. and also like the shape of the labels, like the the weird like what has like the mm-hmm. yeah the... perfect no notes. It uh, looks like. Yeah, no, I, I mean I do like that song. <laughs> Anything else about that? Recently song? Recently rediscovered it. Oh yeah, okay. Heard it a couple times. I think it's amazing. It certainly is a classic. Um, my song of the week is actually one that I have used before. I know that for a fact, but it's been over a year, and I heard it again today, and I was like, "This, this is like this is just always song of the week material." But you know, you can't have it every week. It's probably the best song that I know. So mm-hmm. like, but like, you know, it, it's a it's a song that I do quite like, and it is "Jukebox Hero" by. F- yeah, I mean. I kind of said a lot of the stuff I wanted to say, well, ahead of introducing it, so, yeah. Yeah. It's a repeat song, and that should tell you something. I do quite enjoy the song. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've had repeats that just so happen to be repeats, but I usually try to avoid them. Um, yeah, I, I I do really enjoy the song. This this is the kind of song that has top 10 potential. I haven't made a top 10 in forever, so like I wouldn't oh. don't base it, but I do think it has top 10 potential. And that brings this episode of the Trash Talk Podcast to a close. If you liked what you saw, then hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you haven't already, leave a comment below if you want to say something. Or if you want to talk to us directly, join the Discord server. Link is in the description below, Sergey. That's it. That's it.